Hello everyone and welcome to grade 6 space. Today we're going to start investigating the different physical mechanisms of the Earth's rotation. So we are going to work together and go through a demonstration that starts to look at the Earth and the different space systems and how they work together and affect one another. Hi everyone! So in this portion of the demonstration, I'm going to be using this globe. And what I'd like to do is show you how the position of the Earth and the different movements that it makes out in space, how they create different effects throughout the planet, and how those effects created by the Earth's movement and its position, how those are different depending on where you live throughout the world. So to start off in a classroom, I would want to ask the students, what do you know about the Earth? What can you tell us about the globe here? What do you notice? So some of the things I would expect to hear would be there's a lot of blue, there's a lot of green. We know that that would mean that this area is more land. And over here, we are seeing a large body of water, probably an ocean. Some students might point out where the North Pole is and the South Pole is. Someone might also point out if they know what the equator is. You could probably see this line here. So I'm just going to put my hand up here on the North Pole, my hand down here, approximately on the South Pole. Okay, and I want you to imagine an imaginary line drawing all the way from the North Pole, all the way across and down to the Southern Pole, South Pole. Okay, so this imaginary line that I'm just drawing right here, this is actually the axis. This is the angle of, that the Earth is actually tilted on, as you can see. I'm tilting myself to make this even more obvious. So we know that the Earth is on this angle and it is approximately 23.4 degrees. Okay, so the Earth is always tilted at this angle. And we also know that the Earth does something else. So what is happening to the Earth right now? It actually does this really, really fast out in space, but of course this demonstration will slow it down. So what is happening? So likely answers we're going to hear is that the Earth is turning, okay, maybe, and hopefully we'll hear the word rotate. So the Earth is rotating right now. So it is spinning. That's another word we're probably going to hear. The Earth is spinning, it is rotating, and it is doing so on this angle. And so we can say it's doing this on its axis. It is rotating on its axis. Another cool thing that the Earth does has something to do with the word revolve. So does anybody know what that means? Can anybody think of an example of something that revolves? So the Earth does that as well. It is revolving, but what is it revolving? Um, is it revolving around something? The answer is that it's revolving around the sun. So the Earth is revolving, it's moving around the sun, and it's also rotating on its axis. As the Earth revolves around the sun, it takes a really, really long time. Okay, does anybody know how long? it takes for the Earth to get all the way around the Sun to revolve just once, how long does that take? Okay, so the answer that we're getting to here is that it takes 365 days. It takes one full year for the Earth to go around the Sun. Now what about to rotate? To do one full rotation, how long does that take? Okay, and the answer is 24 hours. And this is very much related to the sun, and I'm going to show you with a light source the impact of this. So, one moment. So, I'm going to use a flashlight, and I'm going to create a bright source of light, and we're going to act as if this is the sun. Right now, I have the sun pointed at the northern hemisphere. And as the Earth rotates, you can see that the sun is moving away from the northern hemisphere, and it's coming across the globe and reflecting onto the southern hemisphere. And as it circles and it does its full rotation, essentially what is happening throughout the Earth is we are getting night and day. Okay, so now we have a better understanding of why we have night and day. We also want to talk about the position of the Earth relative to the sun, how that affects the temperature of the Earth, and how that actually works to create seasons. So we would have a discussion with the students on whether or not everywhere throughout the world experiences the same seasons, why or why not, how do we know. We could have a discussion on the North and South Poles, why there are glaciers in certain parts of the world and not others. Now depending on where the Earth is as it revolves around the Sun, we're going to get more or less heat distributed. So for example, right now, I'm holding the sunlight pretty far away from the globe. And what I'm noticing, we're getting a pretty good distribution of light across the surface of the globe. If I were to point the sun or bring the sun closer to the earth, you can see that we're getting a lot more intensity of light in this area right now than we were when I had the light source pointed further away. So a question that we would want to ask the students is, if the earth is much closer to the sun, 
What impact would that have on the earth? 